Hey everybody, John Bergsman here at Captain Chuck's in downtown Ludington, Michigan. We're here to bring you this week's version of the Hot Bite Report. Now we've had a lot of major weather changes here in the last few days. We've gone from super warm summer to it looks like a pretty brisk start to fall. So we got five great reports for you. We're gonna start with Captain Kelly at Irregardless Sport Fishing down in Huron, Ohio, where walleye fishing has been lights out. Slide around the corner and we're gonna cap talk to Captain Mark from Saginaw Bay for possibly the best fall perch fishing bite he's ever seen in his life. Head on up here and we're gonna go across the bridge to Sault Ste. Marie where they are whacking the pink salmon during their annual pink salmon run and the walleye fishing has been very consistent as well. Now we're gonna slide over to Traverse City, talk with Captain Tony DiFilippo about the awesome opportunities for smallmouth bass and perch right now on the bay as well in the greater Traverse City area. So stay tuned, we've got some awesome reports. We're gonna end the day in Alpena, Michigan with Captain Steve Hubert, who is absolutely destroying steelhead as fast practically as you can catch him for some great big lake end of the season action. Stay tuned, it's the Hot Bites Report. So starting out the day in Lake Erie out of Huron, Ohio. Ohio. Now that's the very eastern edge of the Erie Shores and Islands region. And Huron to Vermilion traditionally in the month of October is a lights out fishery. And as Captain Kelly tells us from Irregardless Sport Fishing, it's lights out already. He moved his boat over there. He's gonna be chartering pretty much the whole month of October and possibly even into November. Of course, Kelly's got a bigger boat, so he's gotta be a little careful with freezing temperatures, but certainly the month of October. So it's walleye fishing and it's fast fishing and it's awesome average size. That's what Kelly's telling me. Whether it's dragon dipsies or thunder sticks or, or uh, bandits, it seems like pretty much everything is working catching quick limits of better than average size fish for the freezer. So if you're looking to get out and to fill your freezer up with some pre-winter walleye in from cold waters of Lake Erie, Captain Kelly from the Irregardless Sport Fishing Charters is relocated now for a month to six weeks over in Huron, Ohio. Give him a call for some awesome Lake Erie action. Hey, Jeff Miller here with Trax Tech. These are our RRH 200s. These are just a straight up and down aluminum tube welded on our base plates to give us the flexibility of adjusting them up and down. But uh, when we did our boat rigging video here installing this boat, we were actually talking to you about how a tube style rod holder in the straight up and down version helps us in the front of this boat. And here it is to show you. So if we're up here jigging, I can actually stand my jigging rod straight up here and it keeps the jig right off the bottom of the river on here. So a beautiful application for that. And then when we're up big water trolling on here, I can actually store two, three, four rod holders on each side of the boat, and I've got four to eight extra rods up here, up on top of the gunnel walls, not anywhere in the way of my hatches or anything, or getting in the way of the middle of my boat, and they're up here on my gunnel walls, so if I need an extra downrigger rod, or planer board rod, or a lead core rod, I can actually have a spare rod on the boat, rigged and ready to go, that if something was to break off or happen, I can mess with that later, come up front, grab myself up another rod, and go back to fishing. So, just a place that uh, our straight up and down RRH 200s come into play and can help you out. So we talked to Captain Mark from Real Fishing from over in Saginaw Bay. Now Mark's been guiding over there for a number of years, but he's been a resident of that greater Saginaw Bay area for his whole life. He tells me that the perch fishing going on right now in Saginaw Bay has been so good that he thinks it's possibly as good as he's ever seen in his whole life. So how are the guys catching it? They're targeting the 15 to 20 foot areas from Aw Gray all the way around the west shore to the mouth of the river or basically Quantica Sea, somewhere in there. But 15 to 20 foot with perch pounders tipped with minnows has been the ticket. Now, when you go out with a perch pounder, make sure that you always have two or three different colors. And I don't just say that to force you to buy a bunch of extra perch pounders. It really can matter. I've seen days where the lime green was like two, three to one better than another color. I've also seen it where the salmon or the pinky color was way better, even chartreuse. So it's really good to have maybe those four base colors and people like the guys here at Captain Chuck's can help you pick those out. What's, what's the best color for their prevailing bite 
like here at PM Lake, they have colors that seem to work better. But down there on Saginaw Bay where Mark is at, 15 to 20 foot minnows right on the hook of the perch pounder straight below the boat and just hang on. One of the other things is make sure you use your Garmin to graph around and find pods of fish before you fish. That's always key to perch fishing. Sure, paying attention to where a few boats are scattered will get you close, but always try to find a little group of fish where you're at. And then go ahead, drop your trolling motor with your spot lock, anchor up. Having a little bit controllable boat conditions is always good for perch fishing. It doesn't seem that slick fat flat offers the best bite, but if you can get that little one foot chop where your boat holds good and you're able to fish off the back corner of your boat with confidence and still feel those bites, that seems to be the best fish catching recipe. So Saginaw Bay, big perch, 15 to 20 foot of water happening for the whole month of October. You know, today's anglers need a ton of battery power to run all the accessories we're running, big electronics, 36 volt trolling motors, and crank up our big engines. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Let me show you the battery storage of my Polarcraft Kodiak. In the back, the stern of the boat, we've got a place for two batteries, for an accessory battery and a cranking battery, plus an oil tank or a water, fuel water separator. And underneath the rod locker, we have a spot to put three 31 series batteries to run our 36 volt trolling motor. Don't be caught short of power. Check out these features and everything else that the Polarcraft credit has to offer at your local Polarcraft dealer. So we're going to slide all the way over the bridge like we talked. Captain Kenny and Captain uh, Dane Stanaway are both catching really nice fish. There's been a really good pink salmon run this year. Those fish are on the backside of that run now here. Good another week or 10 days. So if you're still looking to get out, give Captain Ken a call from from uh, and his numbers on the bottom of the screen are on our website at fishermansdigest.com as well as Captain Dane Stanaway. Both of them can help you get out for that last four way up there in that cold water of the, of the St. Mary's River system for pink salmon. But it's not over when those pinks are done. There is some really, really good walleye and northern pike fishing to be had on the center part of the St. Mary's all the way down to the detour passage. That bite actually gets better. It gets better with big crankbaits, fishing on or around the edges of gravel piles. The same gravel piles that the tournament guys are pounding in the summer, you can catch fish off those in the fall. We film shows here at Fisherman's Digest with Captain Dane all the way until the 7th of November when it was snowing. I think you guys might remember that show from a couple years ago. So that bite is a reliable bite you can count on that'll give you another four to six weeks of fun fish in action up in the greater Sault Ste. Marie area. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed, carport, or small storage building? Visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the Lower Peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more traditional to the fall, the Traverse City area offers it to you with bay fishing with Captain Tony DiFilippo with up north smallmouth charters right out of the greater Traverse City area. Now, Tony moves around and that's the fun thing about it. If he gets too much wind on the bay, Tony can take you to an inland lake. If you got beautiful weather, he'll probably take you out to the bay where you'll slam some absolutely stunning four to six pound smallies. He's an absolute master on the bays and in the whole greater Traverse City region. He specializes in smallmouth bass and that time of the year is right now. From the middle of September until the middle of the November, you almost can't have a better choice anywhere here in the state of Michigan than the Traverse City region. We also got um, some information from Captain Bob Hines from Cent Central Coast Angling who also is a charter up there in the greater Traverse region, who tells me that the perch fishing right now has been stellar. So if you're looking to do something different, not just smallmouth bass fish, the perch fishing has been great. He's also been doing a real number jigging up Cisco's for some fast action. And guys, if you haven't done that, you gotta give Captain Bob a call. You gotta get out there, Central Coast Angling. You gotta get out there and experience some of this really unique fishing, whether it's jigging for Cisco's 
or bay fishing for perch, he can help you out with that. But no matter what you choose to fish for, the greater Traverse City region is one of those spots right now where you can't go wrong. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127 north of St. John's. So hey, we're gonna end this report with Captain Steve Hubert, Chum Bucket Charters out of Alpena. Guys, Steve tells me, kind of like Mark and the perch fishing on Saginaw, Steve tells me this is the best steelhead bite he has ever seen up in Alpena. And Steve has lived there his whole life. As you can see by the pictures flashing across your screen, he is whacking double digit numbers of steelies on a daily basis. He had one day where he caught 24 non-lake non trout fish, whether that's Atlantic, steelhead, and walleye mixed in with his, with his normal lake trout catch, which here in the next couple days is gonna shut off October 1. So Steve will pull the sets that traditionally catch those lake trout. He won't target them. You still are gonna have some bycatch, which you're gonna immediately, of course, unhook and release. But you can tar target steelhead from October, the whole month of October, steelhead and walleye are really good up there in Thunder Bay and Alpena region. Now, how are you doing it? You're gonna be fishing high lines. You're gonna be fishing coppers, 50 back, 75 back, 125 back, or high divers on wire. Those are gonna be your four basic sets to do a really good job. Dreamweaver super slims in bright colors, a lot of oranges, a lot of golds, a lot of spots. Spotted leopard, spotted orange leopard is a really good choice up there. Double orange crush on gold is another really good um, choice for fishing in that Thunder Bay region. But super slims on high coppers or on high divers are the ticket for those nice walleyes and big steelhead right now out of the Alpena region. Hey, thanks for joining us on this week's Hot Bites Report. You know, we try to move you around the state every week. We talked a lot about river fishing and pier fishing. We thought this was a good week to really get everybody also that pays a lot more attention to trolling the big water for whether it's walleyes or, or still want to stay focused on some steelhead. We want to always touch on those too. So, hey, thanks for joining us. As always, go to fishermansdigest.com, click on our fishing reports. You can get your charter captain contact information from those regional reports that are already up on our website. So that's the key. If you see me talking about something here and, you, and, and the information of how to contact the guide isn't there, just go to fishermansdigest.com, click on fishing reports, click on Alpena, for example, and right there at the top, will be Captain Steve Hubert from Chum Bucket Charters contact information. You just take your little mouse, click right on the banner that is right there that has Steve's information on it. It'll hyperlink you right to our guide's information. That's one of the best ways to be able to know that you're in contact with the people that I talk to each week here on Fisherman's Digest. Hey, thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next week.